who either who started you hunting, who got you hunted at the very first time, um, or and or what is your first real memory of being outside enjoying hunting or fishing? Yeah, so not to get too deep, uh, but my parents were divorced when I was really young, and my mom remarried when I was, I don't know, eight or so. Um, still married to the same guy. Stepdad basically raised me. Um, he did not come from a hunting background. My mom's side of the family didn't really hunt much. So um, when I would spend time with my dad, me and my brother would go visit my dad every other weekend. You know, I do remember fishing trips specifically because that was something he really liked to do. And uh, when I was when I was nine, he passed away. So that that sort of line to uh, accessing the outdoors and learning how to love the outdoors that and all connection. that stuff, that connection was was gone in that sense. Uh, my, my grandfather, my dad's dad, um, you know, made it a point to take me and my brother to South Dakota every summer. And we would go out there, we'd fish every lake out there. Uh, didn't do any hunting or anything like that, but it was a, it was a couple weeks long and we'd you know, fish every day. And that was really the first time for me where I got to learn to love. I remember I, I, I got, I don't remember what fish I caught, but I got a letter from like the governor of South Dakota <laughs> and I wish I could find this thing. And I was like a certified junior angler in the state of South Dakota because I caught like five or six different species of fish. So I, I thought that was so cool. And then uh, when I think about it now, I'm like, that was kind of dumb. But it meant a lot to me at the time. But but when I ask you your first memory, that comes up. It comes up. It wasn't dumb, dude. Yeah, it, I mean, it was no, never it, dumb. It, it, it wasn't. But you look at it and I made it such a big deal at the moment. Sure. Um, but no, that was really kind of my first my first memory. And then... Um, as I got a little bit older, I started playing baseball and things like that. And the South Dakota trip stopped and there wasn't much, you know, and I grew up in the country, but I didn't hang out with people who were living that lifestyle. My friends were athletes. They were, we were playing baseball or football or basketball or whatever it was all the time. And that's what kind of consumed our time. And then there was probably 15 years there where no, I didn't do anything. I was not even thinking about it, that lifestyle at all. Didn't really even miss it at that. For those 15 years, did, you didn't miss it. I didn't miss it because I didn't, I didn't fully realize what I was missing, I guess. Okay. And, uh, you know, I did miss the trips to South Dakota. I did miss that. Uh, but it wasn't like, Oh man, I just want to go. I think it was more about spending time with my grandparents and my brother and stuff, as opposed to the actual fishing and the outdoors experience. Um, and then around my mid twenties, I started going out. They hunt pheasant every year out there, and I started going with them. And that's kind of when it it started to sink in. That lifestyle kind of sink started to sink in more for me. So, yeah, it all kind of revolves around my my dad started me out, and then my my grandpa kind of at a young age instilling that in me. And it was always there somewhere, it was just kind of laying dormant, I think. And then I you know I went through my life experiences and came back around to it. And Grandpa's still with us. Yeah. Yeah, he's still talking about going to South Dakota this year again. He's 70, gosh, 70. He just had a birthday. I can't remember if it was 74, 75. He's going to kill me for that. But um, not so much. He's getting up there in age, so he's not so active anymore. Uh, but he talks about pheasant camp and just wanting to go out and spend time with me and my brother and my cousins and my uncles. And that's just part of the experience. And, that he, you know, sure. it's hard hunting sometimes. So he just says, I'm going to hang out on the sidelines, but I'll be there with you guys. Are you going this year? Have you decided? I don't know. We're, we might be planning a trip to Florida, so well, okay. We'll see what happens, but <clears throat> I might put some pressure on you to, to to do that to do it. Well, let me you know similar story. So I, you know, if you would come back full circle, taking you or exposing you to that was important to your grandfather. Yeah. Okay. Um, I we have a pretty similar story, honestly. Uh, parents are divorced, um, and I can credit two people with my my introduction into hunting and fishing. Grandpa and grandma, they were also divorced bitterly. Um, but every Friday, you waited every other weekend, you got to see your dad, as did I. Every other weekend, my mom would take us to my grandmother's house, in particular me, or my grandmother would pick me up at the house and we would go fishing at Geist Reservoir here in Indianapolis. Um, horrible walk into the woods down at what they call devil's backbone which is a beautiful house now uh, right on the lake and we would fish next to a, there was a big dead uh pine tree um evergreen in the water it was there for years and we would fish with cane poles right next to that thing and yeah. we would catch yellow-bellied catfish like crazy 
you know, and then we of course have to carry them back up. And, um, she was, she was a great outdoors lady. She really was. And that's what she, she loved to do it later. She, she had a a place out on a place called raccoon Lake here and she had a pontoon and you know, all the, you, you know, all the fishermen that have all the big, they've got all the gear. She had a big pontoon boat and a rod and reel that she trolled with. And she, she would just drive like this. And she would get a bite and she would put it in neutral and reel in stripers. I loved that lifestyle. I loved going to her place on the weekends. uh, And I I mean, that's just what I did in particular. Uh, But then there's this long time and family dynamics kind of get into it um, where we're just with our dad and we're into sports. It's me and my brother. For the most part, we have a sister. uh, But my dad and we were all into sports. I also had a grandfather who I've written, you know, a little bit about. He, at the same time, would introduce me to to fishing and, and even hunting squirrels. <clears throat> so that's where I got it, but then I kind of left it. If I were to think of one of my memories, the first one, it's it's kind of strange, but I for some reason, I, I do remember my papaw uh, asking me if I knew how to use a rod and reel. I said, sure. You know, I, absolutely. And I was five, maybe. One time, big giant knot, yeah. you know. And I remember him saying, that you lied to papaw. You don't do that again. I mean, from there on, I'm like, whoa, okay. That's all it took That's to a bad set you thing. straight. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so not only do I get a little life lesson there, but, you know, I'm starting to love love fishing and hunting. Uh, come full circle here just a couple months ago when we wrote that piece about him and he read it, it really meant something to him. And so now I'm, I'm thinking how important it is to mentor somebody, yeah. not even to just the person you're mentoring. And I, I tried not to say kid. Because we're not, we shouldn't be just looking at the kids. One hundred percent. We get into that, but it's important to the mentor, right? That's part of it. That's a huge part of it. Um, and so, I would challenge anybody, yourself included, myself included, who have you mentored? Who are you introducing to the sport? Mm-hmm.